sisters and brothers, there is no division. And if there is no division, there is one church. If there is no division, there is one faith. And Paul ends this section by saying, if there is no division, there is one Lord. There is one Lord. Somebody say one Lord. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those of us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Recently, I heard somebody making fun of a Christian, asking them, what prayer are you telling me about? What God I have to talk to? What do you mean somebody died for my sin? Nobody died for my sin. I am my own man. And the person went on and on. And I stood there somewhat saddened to hear how someone articulated that for them, the Lord does not really exist. The truth is, my family, we must accept that the cross of Calvary is indeed foolishness to a lot of people. Why would God send his son to die in that manner and through that death redeem, deliver, and save the world? The hymn writer asks us each and every year, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Does it really make sense in 2017 to talk about a death on a cross and blood cleansing us from our sin? Is it really true that Christ died to save you and me? Are our lives any better? Do we feel any different? Does something change when we call on the name of Jesus? Is there something that grips us, transforms us as we talk about God? Why do we come to church? Do we feel any different in the house of God? Does it make us better people when we leave? Are we better witnesses for God? I raise these questions not having all the answers, but I raise these questions for us to think for a moment, sisters and brothers, to lift up the mirror and let us look at ourselves as the church of Calvary and look in the mirror and respond. Are we proclaiming that we serve one Lord? Do we have one God? Or are there other gods we are serving? Are there other people taking the place of God in our lives? Do we pledge allegiance to others and not to God? I believe the Apostle Paul puts it this way. But to those of us who are being saved, the cross is the power of God. We proceed in a little while to our church's annual council. A time of reflection and accountability. A time of transparency. A time to give God thanks for all that has taken place in a year that has passed. But it is also a time, my family, for us to recommit. Recommit to the purpose and mandate given to the church of Christ. That we are to go into all the world, preach, teach, baptize in his name, making disciples, not of some people, not of those we like, not of those that make it easy for us to make disciples of, but make disciples of all people, granted and given an assurance that, lo, God is with us to the end. It is my sincerest prayer and hope that as we go through this year's church council, that apart from the usual talk and rhetoric, that something is stirred in our hearts again, to have a compassion for lost souls, to have a compassion for the purpose and will of our sovereign God. According to John 3.16, that God truly loved this world, that he gave his only begotten son, and that all of us who believe in him, we will not perish, for we have the gift of everlasting life. We will prosper in this life. We are blessed to bless others. We are called to help others. We are here to impact and to transform a world that is seemingly losing hope each and every day. We are called to rescue the perishing and to care for the dying. We are called to sacrifice even when it seems like sacrifice means persons are taking advantage of us. We are called to love even when it is easier not to love. We are called to stand even when standing may cost us our life. We are called to be, even when it is easier not to be, and it is safer to withdraw 
into the comforts of our home and to not trouble a soul. We are called to be salt even when salt is not appreciated. We are called to be light even when persons wish the light will be turned off and do not want for things to be seen. We are called, my family, to be the church. I pray today that as the mirror is up, that as we reflect on a year that has passed, that as we assess ourselves and even see the areas that we have fallen short, that we do not throw our hands up in despair, we do not bury our heads in the sand, we do not run from the challenges that await us, but like the true church of God, inspired and encouraged by the hymn writer, let us together press on towards facing a task unfinished that drives us to our needs. Let us believe that the God who called us is still here and still with us. Let us believe that God is indeed working his purpose out as the year succeeds the year. Let us testify that our lives are different because of this God. And now we endeavor to make other people's lives better. Calvary, I remind you pastorally as I remind you collegially and individually that within the body of Christ, there can be no divisions, for we are one church with one faith, serving one Lord. May God bless us in all that we do and say. In Jesus' name.